When I think about the entire process of surrogacy and handing over a baby to somebody that couldn't have one, that is like pure excitement. I think that's another thing that's pretty universal between all of the Soros sisters. When you have the experience and having helped literally thousands, that makes what we do and the complexity and the challenges worth it. I'm Jessica Geisinger and I am 21 weeks along in my journey as a surrogate. I was a little confused on what she meant by she wanted to be a surrogate. I remember him being a little like standoffish about it or just kind of unsure. And then the more I kind of, not that I pried, but <laughs> I can be like, I'll ask questions about why. I was very uneducated about what <laughs> surrogacy was. And as she exposed me to it more, I, I became more uh, comfortable, I guess you could say. I got to a certain point in my life where I knew I wanted to have children. I was not in a relationship, but I felt like if it was sort of now or never. My plan had always been to have two children, but I was uh, unable then to carry again after my daughter was born. Within probably three weeks after my daughter was born, I was back in the clinic saying, what do I do? What, what are my options? And I hadn't really thought about surrogacy terribly much before I found myself in a position to need to explore it. I had seen it in the news, so I was certainly aware it was an option. Because celebrities do have these high profile surrogacy arrangements, whether you're Kim Kardashian, Juliana Rancic, Sarah Jessica Parker, Elton John, it helps to normalize the conversation. You read about it all over the news and like see how Kim and Kanye for their third child decided to have a surrogate. They've always been interested in starting a family, but the thought of actually being pregnant and giving birth completely horrifies and terrifies me. So it's definitely something that I'd seriously look into one day. I appreciate that it exists for women. Um, but like anything in like modern science, you don't want anything to go too far. It could become like a vanity thing. You know, it's in the popular press, you know, modern family kind of TV shows. So it's not taboo anymore. People are more um, open to talking about this is our surrogate, this is our surrogate baby. So we just see the overall trending, uh, trending up of the practice. Obviously there's a lot to consider when you're putting your body through something as drastic as being pregnant. Once you've had at least one child and you kind of know how pregnancy feels for you. Then you kind of get into more like specific details about how your life would change, how it would affect your job, your daily life, your family situation. And I think that as stuff came up in life and I put a what if on if I were being a surrogate, it all just seemed like it would make sense. Surrogate compensation varies quite a bit, and it varies depending upon a number of factors such as location, whether or not the surrogate has uh, been a surrogate before, whether or not she is carrying twins, but the national average is anywhere from about thirty to about $60,000. You know, you're taking on large money interest. And one of the biggest problems is just getting a handle on how many billions of dollars we're talking about here. Unfortunately, of the cost of surrogacy, only a small part actually goes to the gestational carrier. And then there's also costs that associated with the agency and lawyers and insurance, and it, it all adds up. But the gestational carrier only gets a portion of that. In the United States, the legislative sort of landscape, if you will, around surrogacy is a patchwork. When you read the contracts, they're heavily biasing the people with money and not the surrogate. A lot of the, the agreement is very, very clear about whose baby this is. There are some parts that are bold-faced and, and in all caps that pertain to who this child will belong to and that uh, Jess and her husband are making no claims on this child. You want to answer some questions? Here, wait, oh, fix your hair. <laughs> What's in my belly? A baby. Can, can you say that? How, do you, how does that make you feel? A necklace. Mommy's a baby feel great. The necklace makes mommy's baby feel great? Yeah. 
when the baby's born, the bell goes to the mom, and the mom wears the bell so that the sound reciprocates from in utero, so, which I don't think I told him that. So I, don't know. I don't know, I picked up on that. There's not a lot that I can do in terms of my space to get ready just yet because it's a small space and we don't have room to bring things in before we need to. I have bought a couple of books for my daughter to try to explain how her life is going to change. I think it's going to be a bit of a shock to her. Um, it's possible that when we get a little bit closer, she'll, she'll have more of the wherewithal to understand what's going on. Jess called me at 4.45 a.m. on Tuesday and said she was heading over to the hospital. They were able to wait for me and uh, did a C-section shortly after I arrived. I was fortunate that I was there for the delivery, so I was able to see her actually emerge and to hold her right away. It was nice to be able to do that and to feel that immediate connection. Just being able to kind of like see her, like interact with the baby and stuff like that was definitely like full circle. The kids got to go visit her too, and so kind of for them to be able to see everything like come together and put two and two together like, oh, this is the baby that mommy was carrying and this is the baby's mommy. And now she gets to take the baby home. I haven't had any, I, I guess you could call them like weird feelings about like having a baby and then not having a baby to take care of. There's like zero stress of like worrying about how your life is gonna change bringing a baby home. I definitely don't expect like constant contact or communication, I'm sure that uh, she'll probably send pictures and updates. I don't know how it will turn out, but I'm open to whatever. I wouldn't feel bad one way or another. It's been such a great relationship. She has been so wonderful. I would hope that everybody would have a relationship like this uh, if they go through this process. It's been really wonderful. It's definitely been um, super rewarding and I'm totally on board with doing it again. <laughs> you know, two days after I've delivered but we'll figure that out down the road. <laughs>